He was the ruthless leader of the October Revolution and the founder and first leader of the Soviet Union. But Vladimir Lenin, on the 21st of January 1924, at around 6.50 in the evening, died. He had been ill for many years and he had suffered from a number of strokes. There was a belief that an assassination plot he survived at the hands of a female assassin named Fanny Kaplan may have caught up with him eventually as bullets were never removed from his body, as he was so fearful that a doctor would finish him off. Lenin is remembered in history as one of the most controversial figures, and some people regard him as a hero if they were supporters of his political beliefs, but others consider that his rise resulted in the slaughter of the Tsar, Tsarina and the Romanov royal family including the children, and that he would later usher in the rise of Stalin, whose rules would be synonymous with purges in which millions were slaughtered. But one of the strangest and most macabre spectacles which can still be seen today is the body of Lenin, which remains a whole century after his death on public display inside of his mausoleum. But how are his remains preserved so remarkably? Today we will look at this, and to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. In March of 1923, Vladimir Lenin had a third stroke, and he then lost the ability to talk and speak. He also experienced partial paralysis on his right side, and despite over the next few months making a slow recovery, he made his final visit to the Kremlin in the October of 1923, just clear to everyone that this was not the Vladimir Lenin who had once galvanised a revolution that led to the overthrow of the last Russian ruling family, but he was clearly very ill. On the 21st of January 1924, Lenin fell into a coma and he died that day at the age of 53. Officially, his cause of death was that he died from incurable disease of the blood vessels, but others have put other causes down as the reason that Lenin died, including his numerous strokes. The Soviet authorities announced the death of Lenin the following day, on the 23rd of January, two days after his death, many mourners from the Communist Party and officials visited his home in Gorka to view his body, this was then placed inside of a red coffin by powerful Bolsheviks and it was transported then by train to Moscow. The coffin of Lenin was then placed inside the House of Trade Unions, where it then lay in state on display for people to see. Over one million people over the course of three days came to see the remains of Lenin. There was at the time a lot of jostling for power by leading communists, and a battle for power emerged between Leon Trotsky and Stalin. And Stalin even got one up over Trotsky, telling him the wrong date of Lenin's funeral. But in the days following his death, the wooden tomb in Red Square, close to the Moscow Kremlin wall, where Lenin's body was displaced, was replaced by a more elaborate mausoleum and sarcophagus. The body of Lenin was embalmed by pathologist Alexei in Vanokif Abroskov, and to begin with, this was done so that it remained in a good manner, whilst many people filed past before the funeral. The decision was then made to not bury Lenin, but instead to keep the body on public display, and to ensure that it could be viewed for centuries later by anyone who wanted to see it. Two other men, Boris Zabrowski and Vladimir Volobrev, were later drafted in to help preserve the remains, and they worked on the body in the same manner that the pharaohs were worked upon. A huge mausoleum was then established, known as Lenin's Mausoleum, where the body has been on almost continuous display inside of it since it was completed in 1930. In October of 1941, the body was evacuated to Serbia to protect it as the advancing German army during World War II posed a threat. And following the war, the body was then returned to the mausoleum and the tomb was reopened. Following the death of Joseph Stalin, Stalin's body was embalmed and placed on public display next to Lenin's too, but this would then be interned in a tomb at the Kremlin Wall 
necropolis. But there were a number of problems with keeping Lenin's body in a good manner. Firstly, there were a number of dark spots which had formed upon Lenin's body following his death. These were on his face and also his hands, and they wanted to show Lenin as almost untouched as if he had fallen asleep. This was solved by using different chemicals to make the skin appear whiter. Also, whilst working on Lenin's remains, Boris Zabrowski invented a new way to purify chloroform for the preservation process. He found that if the skin wrinkled or discoloured, that using a solution of aesthetic acid and ethyl alcohol diluted with water treated this, and then hydrogen peroxide could be used to bring back the original colour of the tissue. Damp spots on his remains were also disinfected using phenyl or quinine. Every year, the remains of Lenin are soaked in a solution of glycerol and potassium acerate. To keep the body looking fresh and clean, it is removed briefly off display whilst this takes place, but there are parts of him which are fake. Synthetic eyeballs were placed inside of his orbital cavities to ensure that his eye sockets did not collapse. As mentioned, his remains are still on display today, and the folk who are responsible for this today are known as the Centre for Scientific Research and Teaching Methods in Biochemical Technologies. There are around six autonomists and biochemists and surgeons known as the Mausoleum Group who constantly maintain the remains. They also help preserve the bodies of Vietnamese leader Ho Chi Minh and the remains of Kim Il Sung and Kim Jong Il, the North Korean dictators. The scientists keep a close eye on the shape, weight, colour and suppleness of Lenin's corpse and they have developed their own embalming methods around it. When Lenin's body was originally embalmed, the cold Soviet winter helped to protect and preserve the body, but... The major arteries of Lenin had been slashed and cut, and the blood vessels cut and the body relieved of blood. This meant that using embalming fluids through the circulatory system was not possible, so today, micro-injections using single needles deliver the embalming fluids to part of the former leader's remains, and there are cuts and scars of the body from where things had been done to it in the past. Through this, a double-layered rubber suit has been created to keep a thin layer of embalming fluid covering Lenin's remains at all times during public display, and a regular suit of clothes that he is shown wearing fits over this rubber suit. The body does become re-embalmed every few years, and it takes roughly six weeks to complete this. Every day there are inspections carried out to ensure that nothing is going wrong and that no decay is setting in amongst the body of Lenin. His body needs to be kept from drying out so it doesn't mummify either. Over time there has been specific work done on different body parts. The scientists have had to deal with old and wrinkles that appear on his body and eventually artificial skin patches were sewn onto his body when pieces of skin on his feet went missing during the war years. Also, Lenin's nose, face and other parts have been re-sculpted to restore them to the original look, as over time things have begun to fade and sink slightly. It was a few years back, revealed that the true cost of preserving his embalmed remains are roughly $200,000 a year, and some inside of the land question whether Lenin's remains should be laid to rest once and for all. It is considered that of all of Lenin's internal organs have been removed too, meaning that the man who is laid to rest today inside of his mausoleum and who is still on public display a century after his death is just a shell. His skin, which is shown, has had so much work on it, fitted with an artificial patches or pumped full of so many chemicals that it is rather a macabre spectacle. It lies on the open sarcophagus behind a glass case which is temperature controlled, his head lying on a red cushion. Lenin is propped up and is viewed by roughly 450,000 people a year who file past the remains. What is interesting, though, is that the decision to preserve and enshrine his corpse was opposed by his family and loved ones, and even his wife did not want this to happen. Lenin wanted a simple burial, or cremation, 
but 100 years after his death, his remains are still pumped full of fluids to keep him in a relatively good state. It's believed he is kept in this way as a sign of the Soviet Union's formation and of communism. But since the collapse of the Union, he has not been laid to rest once and for all, and leaders tend to avoid the question of placing him in a grave. Thank you for watching, and to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And again, thank you so much for watching.